Good morning, friends. Welcome to my monthly reset day. I haven't done a vlog on my monthly reset for a couple of months now. Um, I've just really been focusing on trying to get stuff done during my monthly reset days. Uh, I did do a video last month that talked about how to implement a monthly reset day, why I do it, why it's important to set aside time for yourself, to manage all of the thinking tasks. I do feel like homeschool moms get very overwhelmed with all of the things that they have to do on a day-to-day -day basis. So having time set aside so that you can work through all of those things without having to do them immediately in the moment is super helpful. So it's about eight o'clock right now. No, it's probably 7.30 and my kids are still asleep. I have been doing my morning routine and that's what I do every morning. And after breakfast, that's when I will start my planning day. And so I'm going to take you through what I'm doing today. It changes depending on the month, but typically I'm working on my family calendar, my personal calendar, my goals, my reading journal, budget stuff, anything that I'm thinking about or that I have jotted down throughout the month, this is the time that I get to sort of sift through all of that information, cross things off that no longer matter, uh, do more research if I need to think about something, homeschool planning, all of that kind of stuff. So right now I am going to finish my email to my newsletter community and check in with my membership community and uh, then I do need to get ready for the day. <laughs> Although I'm really tired this morning, which is never a, a good thing <laughs> as we start uh, a thinking day. <laughs> okay, so it is 9.15, the kids have eaten, I need to clean up from breakfast. I do have my list <sighs> of things that I want to do today. I want to update my reading journal and set up May. I want to do my goals, my family calendar, a budget check, which I'll talk about in a second, my personal calendar, and then start to write out my homeschool wrap up and review information. In my state, we have to do a teacher review or have our student take a standardized test each year as part of our homeschool requirements. And so I just need to sit down and kind of compile summaries of all of the subjects that we're required to make progress in. It won't take me very long. Thankfully, I have my teacher planner right there that has all of my information in it, but this is just kind of a broad overview and some bullet points so that when I sit down to do the teacher review, I know what I want to chat about. Um, yes, so <laughs> my budget stuff. I've been talking so much about budgeting this past several months, really since probably last September, I guess, I have been trying to figure out a new system for budgeting because if you've seen any of my videos, I've been using the same Excel spreadsheet since 1999 for, <laughs> with some updates. But uh, so it's been a long time that I've been using an Excel spreadsheet. I really like Excel. I'm a nerd. I like to make things balance. I like to be able to easily use formulas, all of that stuff. But I've wanted this year to spend a lot more time deep diving on where our money is going. I do a general budget, but we do have some savings goals this year and um, some bigger projects that we are trying to save money for. And I just feel like we needed to get more of a handle on our spending where we were actually spending money. So I've been doing a lot more spend tracking this year and that's been going really well. At the beginning of the year, I thought that I was going to use the home planner from Passionate Penny Pincher for budgeting and home management. That did not work. So I moved back to my Erin Condren Vertical Weekly for weekly planning and I created a binder for budgeting. I do not like working out of a binder on the regular just because I don't, I like to just have a coiled notebook to work in because it's easier to take with me. It's easier to sit outside or to sit on the couch and do that kind of stuff. When I have a binder, I really have to sit at a table or a desk. And while that's not bad, I 
do kind of want to be comfortable sometimes. So then a couple of weeks ago, I decided to use my Erin Condren Daily Duo and see if I could manage all of my finances in that as well as my daily planning. And I can because there is a page between Sunday and Monday each week. So that page between Sunday and Monday, that lined page, gives me the opportunity to do my spend tracking for the previous week. However, I've noticed as I've been doing that over the past couple of weeks, I'm really missing my brain dump list, which is what I had been using that page between Sunday and Monday for. Now, I could do a brain dump list on just a notebook. That would be totally fine, but I really like having it in the Daily Duo. It helps with my planning process. I start my weekly planning with that I do a brain dump, then I do my weekly plan, writing out all of the tasks on specific days, and then each day I do my time blocking and write out my to-do list that way. So could I just use another random notebook for a brain dump list? Absolutely, but I want to keep it in the daily duo. And <laughs> so this morning I ended up buying a an eight and a half by eleven monthly planner. They're fifty percent off. On Erin Condren right now and in fact they probably won't be available for much longer. Um, they probably will not be available when this video goes live because this will be at the end of May. The new the new monthly planners come out I think maybe in June for like for the academic year July through June or January through December. So I got an eight and a half by 11 and that's primarily because yesterday I was fiddling around on my computer and made a printable in Excel <laughs> to print out my budget each month and I'm going to print it just on a sticker sheet like those full page sticker sheets and then stick it into my monthly planner. Sorry I had to sit down. My plan is to use the monthly planner now. <laughs> We're, I'm going to try this eight and a half by eleven size. It might be way too big but I was afraid that if I got the seven by nine monthly calendar, then it would be not quite big enough. I did shrink down that printable that I made in Excel so that it could fit on the seven by nine, but I just think it would be nice to have it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to try this for a few months and see, well, I say that, we will see how far I get because I've only been in the daily duo doing this budgeting for like two weeks at this point. Um, so my hope is to use the eight and a half by 11 monthly planner for financial planning. However, if I see that it is going to be too big or I don't need as much lined space, then I will get the seven by nine. It's so funny because last year I did get a monthly planner for budgeting and in 2022, that's what I used. However, I wasn't doing spend tracking last year. And so I wasn't using as many of the line pages between the months. And this year I am doing spend tracking. So we'll see how it goes. I may just end up moving back to an Excel spreadsheet, all of this madness that I've created. It's kind of making a lot of work for me. But the fact that I've I created a new budget sheet in Excel um, so I can fill in all of the numbers that I need to and then just print it out and stick it in my planner and then have that have access to that throughout the month and keep track of my spend tracking all in one spot i think that will be better hopefully it will kind of give me the best of both worlds where i'm doing my actual budget in excel with making sure all of my numbers are correct because there are some times when i'm using just a regular calculator and screw up adding numbers together um, especially if it's a really long list of numbers you know that just happens. Uh, so if I can do all of my formulas in Excel and then print it out so that I can see it in front of me, that's what I'm thinking. Okay, so the first thing that I've got to do, <laughs> that was a lot about financial planning, and I don't even really do my financial planning on my monthly reset day anymore because of the way my husband's pay periods are. Um, so I kind of do that at a separate day, but I do check in with my budget on my monthly reset day just to make sure that we're on track for the month. Uh, yes, so I need to clean up from breakfast and then I'm going to do all of my planning stuff, I think, on the dining room table. I kind of go back and forth. Sometimes I do it at my office desk. Sometimes I do it in the kitchen. Sometimes I'm doing it outside. That's mainly when the weather is nice. But today I'm going to just lay everything out on my dining room table so that I can work on that stuff. 
Um, I do also have my Zoom call for my membership community today. We're going over planning next year, um, and it's a Q&A, a live Q&A, so everybody can ask whatever questions they want. Um, so that's kind of going to break up my day a little bit, and because it's already 9.30, I feel a little crunched for time. Typically, I do have a co-working live stream on my planning day, but it's... It's a co-working session, so we work on, uh, using the Pomodoro method where we're doing 25 minutes of focused work and then five minutes of rest or break or chatting. <laughs> and um, and so usually I'm still working on my, my planning stuff during that time, but today with the Q&A, it's going to be a little bit more of an abbreviated day. This isn't typical. This isn't a typical monthly reset day, but we're going to go with it. I don't have a whole lot of other things that I need to do. Um, I don't have stuff. I don't have to make dinner because I made um, turkey, taco, chili stuff. Um, so we're going to have that for leftovers. And then uh, I do have my dailies that I need to do, but those don't take me very long. The kids are working on school today but it's mainly just math. They're just trying to finish up their math. And then, yeah, I'm not doing laundry or anything else. I'm not doing any real organizational projects. It's more just the thinking task. And this month has really been kind of crazy anyways because the kids were sick for three weeks. So <laughs> I'm kind of all over the place at this point and I need to check in on my goals, my quarterly action plans that I wrote out at the end of March. <sighs> I'm not sure how much I've actually gotten done. So I need to work on all of that stuff, but I'm going to clean up the kitchen and then set everything out for my planning. So here are all of the things that I'll be working on today. My reading journal, my goals planner, my daily planner slash personal slash financial planner at the moment, my work planner, <laughs> homeschool stuff, that's budget stuff my family calendar and my weekly calendar. So I do have a lot of paper calendars. A lot of people will use digital calendars and I think that's great. In fact, I do use a digital calendar to kind of brainstorm my business planning uh, and then I put other notes and such into my monthly planner. It helps me to get all of the thoughts down on paper. Now, I do have a notebook that I will just take notes in. I will use my computer. There are some days when I'm just jotting things down and working through lists that I've already made throughout the month. This month, I did not make any lists because like I said, kids were sick. And so I do definitely feel quite a bit behind. I'm going to start working on my monthly calendars, my family command center, and my personal calendar, and then see where we are at. I'm kind of hungry, so I might need to make myself some food and, um, and then eat that. Yes, so what I'm just going to do is write out all of the events for the month ahead, get May's planning date on the calendar, make sure that I am taking into account appointments and, and things that we have to do throughout the month, because that's kind of how my monthly planning starts. calendar. This is our family calendar that lives in our kitchen command center. That is all done. So now I'm going to work on my personal calendars. I did write down because I'm getting the monthly calendar for the financial planning. And so what ends up happening is I do not use the monthly calendar spread in every single one of my planners. And I was trying to figure out if I wanted to use my daily planner as my main personal calendar. The challenge is I write down a lot of appointments outside of the six months that are in the daily duo. So I think that I need to use my weekly planner as my personal calendar, but then I don't really have much to put on my calendar in the daily planner. 
but that's okay. And that's actually how it was before I started using the home planner. It's very confusing, I know, but I feel good about our month. May is always super busy. We have a lot of birthdays. We have a lot of things going on, a lot of outside chores, as well as finishing up our end of year review and all of that stuff, getting all of my homeschool paperwork finished. So that's kind of where I'm at at the moment. And I'm listening to an audiobook, which I always do while I'm doing any sort of anything that is kind of mindless. I always listen to an audiobook. <laughs> good progress this morning. It's 1030 right now. I've done my personal calendars with family calendar. I've gone through my goals. I haven't written out goals for next month yet. I do plan to do that. I'll have a video and actually it will have already gone up <laughs> by the time this video goes up. So I do need to do that, but I did go through my quarterly action plans, which I feel pretty good about. I had hoped to do more spring cleaning my homeschool stuff this month but that did not happen and that's totally okay and actually after i went back and kind of revisited some of my old blog posts or videos and um, when i have done this in the past it's usually been in june when my kids are volunteering at bbs or attending bbs so I, when I have like dedicated time with no interruptions, my kids are older and so I don't get a ton of interruptions, but there are still interruptions. There are still interruptions. So right now I'm going to take a little break. I'm going to clean up all of my mess in the kitchen from where I was writing out everything and clean up my desk so that I can film my goals video. I'm going to make some lunch and well, I, don't eat breakfast uh, and I don't really eat lunch. I have eaten around 10, 10.30. That's typically when I eat in the morning and then I tend to eat again at like three. It's very strange. <laughs> it's just how my body works. So I'm going to make myself a salad and figure out what I'm going to make the kids for lunch, get everything kind of cleaned up so that I can sit down and do my goals video and write out everything for May. And then I feel pretty good about things. There are some things that I still want to just kind of go through and uh, think about, but if I can get my goals done and get my office kind of cleaned up and I have all of the other calendars done, uh, I'm feeling very, very good about how this day is going. And it really hasn't taken me that long. It's only been about an hour. So that is good for me. I don't have a whole lot on my new release list for May. There haven't been, I haven't been reading as many books as I normally read in a month. And I think that's partly because I've been so exhausted at night because my kids were sick. They had like this crazy cough thing that was exacerbated by nighttime and laying down. So they were up a lot coughing overnight, which made me tired. Um, so I was not reading nearly as much at night as I normally do. So I didn't read very much in April. I do need to update my Goodreads still. And there's only a couple of new releases that I want to read for May. I'm going to have to search out and see if there are other books. Typically I have at least four or five that are coming out, but this time I, I only have two. Although I do have several books that have come out in the last week or so um, at the end of April that I do also want to read and I've already downloaded a lot of them in Kindle Unlimited or in Hoopla so um, so I do have to get through those books but I am hoping to get back into a better reading rhythm this month. Uh, yes but so far the day's going well. I've done a lot of planning. It's about noon. I've got to make lunch for the kids. I did just get my Erin Condren order. My box just came in the mail. So I'm going to open that up and see. I didn't get very much. I think I just got a planner and maybe some sticker sheets, but 
we'll see when I open that up. And then, uh, yeah, I'd like to get my goals done, but I don't know if I'm going to have enough time to do that before the live stream. Um, cause I have to start getting that ready around 1.30 and I'm expecting my mom to show up in like an hour. So, <laughs> all right. So I'm going to make lunch and then we'll see what's next on the list. Okay. I just ordered this on Monday. <laughs> this was incredibly fast shipping. I did pay for the two to three day shipping because it seems to take forever whenever I order something from Erin Condren. But now I'm regretting paying all that money for shipping because I just placed that other order this morning for monthly planner and some label stickers for the teacher planner, which will come out in the middle of May. In fact, this video will be up after the teacher planners have already been released. So, and I will have videos up of all of that stuff if you're interested. Um, so these are the free gifts for the... EC Insider Launch Day, because I'm an insider, so you have this little charm, what you are looking for is within you. Um, this is cute little keychain type thing, I guess. I don't tend to use charms on my planner or anything like that, but I know that sometimes Emma will take them or Lucy will take them. Then this was the other thing, and it is a post-it note. I didn't get these in my in my review boxes. <laughs> I don't know if other people did or not, but this was the free gift. It's just a little sticky note holder. It's just uh, cardboard. It's cute and um, just has the sticky notes, which is really nice because I use a ton of sticky notes. All right, so then I did buy several sticker sheets. These are, this is the canvas design for the sticker sheet, and I think it might be Oh, what is the background color? It's starlight or something like that. Uh, I got this specifically for my teacher planner. Um, when I set it up, I do use these sticker sheets right here, this part, to make my kids' reading journals. Uh, if I have a video up of that already, I will let you know. I got two of those. I got one of the canvas design and then I got two of the Inspire design and actually the reason that I got two of Inspire and the Wildflowers is because I ran out of these for my reading journal. Let me just grab that for you. So I made a reading journal out of a Leutstrom notebook this year and so I just put these washi stickers up at the top for each month and then um, I have had a little bit of trouble finding stickers for letters and numbers. <laughs> it's kind of a pain, um, but that's just kind of what I have done for my reading journal. But I did. When did I stop? So I haven't. I haven't set up the second half of the year. Um, let's see, so I'm missing an October monthly and a November monthly, and I did have a December. So these are just um, <laughs> pages that I have not finished, and I had run out of these sticker sheets, so I figured get some of those while I'm at it. Now, obviously, one of these is going to be for Emma, this one will be for Jack, and then one of these will be for Lucy, or vice versa. I'm not sure on the Inspire and the Wildflowers. The Inspire might be for Lucy and the Wildflowers might be for Emma. That's just for when I set up their reading log in my teacher planner because I do tend to keep track of the books that they have read throughout the year, they also keep lists themselves. Jack and Emma both have reading journals. This is obviously for the, the ring agenda. However, this is the A5 size sticky notes. And I really wanted the A5 size. They have it in the, the regular seven by nine and it's a snap in. Um, I don't ever snap these into my planner. I guess I could probably uh, punch it myself because I do have a coil punch. Um, that I could then snip the ends and put it on the planner, but I don't put it in my planner. I just keep it in a bag on my desk. Um, but I love using these little sticky notes, especially when I'm planning for homeschool planning. And I wanted something that was small enough to fit let me see. This is the daily duo that I'll be using come July, but I wanted something where I could put 
maybe a sticky note on the side and still have plenty of space to be writing here. Or if I wanted to put something here, um, it wouldn't take up most of the the lines so that's what I got this for and see how this the size is because I do have these in several other designs that um, are the seven by nine size okay and then the last thing that I have is my new weekly planner so I just got oh, guys they didn't give me the rose gold coil all right well I'm gonna have to email them about this then and see because I know that I paid for it. Uh, okay. Well, anyways, this is the vertical weekly planner in the Inspire design, which I'm really excited about. And I'm going to have to look at my order and make sure that I did actually pay for that rose gold coil, um, which I think that I did, but we will see. <laughs> uh, and this is going to be my weekly planner for 2023-2024 until next year. I'm really excited about using this. I am disappointed that it's on a silver coil. <laughs> okay, so I am disappointed that I got my life planner after three days from ordering, but it's now on a silver coil. So I emailed their customer service. Usually they're really good about getting back to me um, when there are errors, but I am definitely bummed because I was really excited to start um, putting stuff in this planner for July through December. So yeah, that is that is where we're at. But the stickers are good and I'm excited about the size of the sticky notes. And now it's 12.05, I've got water on, I'm just making mac and cheese for the kids for lunch. And then getting ready for my live stream and making sure that I have all of my paperwork for that because we're going to be going over big picture yearly homeschool planning um, and how to figure out where to kind of put everything. So that's what we're going to be working on this afternoon. But I do feel good about how things have been going today. There are definitely some more things that I need to do. I'm not sure if I'm going to get to them today. Mainly my goals and then just checking in with my budget, which I don't really need to do that today. That can be something I do this this weekend um, and then just kind of sitting down and kind of brainstorming a few ideas that I have uh, but once I get my goals down I feel like I'll have a good handle on the next month and what I want to accomplish so that is where we are at okay let's uh, take a look at my list for today I have done my AM routine, I did my reading journal, I've done my family calendar, I've not done a budget check yet, I did do my personal calendar, I have not started on the homeschool wrap up and review info yet, so I'm not sure I'm going to get to my goals, budget check, or homeschool review stuff today. I did do, well, I checked the floors, I vacuumed, I cleaned off the surfaces, and my office desk is clean. Um, I did check in with everybody. I've been vlogging my monthly reset. It is 1.15 right now, so I have to get everything set up for the live stream, which starts at 2. And then, uh, yeah, hopefully I will have some time afterwards to do this homeschool unboxing, as well as my Magels, but I'm not entirely sure that that will happen. We shall see. So I'm done with my live stream. I think it went well. Um, it was a little bit shorter today, although I was talking quite a bit. <laughs> I'm always talking quite a bit. Um, but if you want to see the replay, you can see that. It's always uploaded in my Patreon group after it's done. Um, now I do have to work on my goals. I'm not sure if I'm going to get to writing everything out today or not because it is three o'clock. I feel like it's been a pretty good day of getting things done. Where is my list? So I checked in uh, with my list right before the live stream and I've done the the big things that I really needed to do. 
I do still have my goals, my budget check, and my homeschool review. I think I'm going to push off my budget and homeschool stuff until this weekend. I'm going to try and work on the goals, and then I'm also just going to write down a few things. I have a few homeschool things that I want to research. It's not the homeschool review that I that I talked about before, which is writing a summary of information for all of the subjects that we're required to teach in Maine, just so that I've wrapped my head around the big picture of what I want to share in my review. I didn't have as much ahead of me today because this month has been kind of chaotic because the kids were sick for a few weeks. So I was mainly managing that and I didn't have a really, I didn't really have a lot of time to think about anything else <laughs> throughout the month. So um, I have pushed off some of my spring cleaning stuff, some of my decluttering things that I had hoped to do during our April vacation week. So all of that stuff will be moved around in my goals, but I don't have a whole lot of just thinking stuff to do today. Uh, mainly because I'm kind of decided on most of my homeschool stuff already, but I don't have, well, I do have the resources, but I don't have as much of the instructor's guides that I need, and that's what I really need in order to wrap my head around next year's curriculum. Yes, yeah, so what I'm going to do now is just work on my goals and maybe do my unboxing with all of my sunlight and random purchases behind me. Yes, so that is where we are at. Again, it's three o'clock and I'm losing steam. I'm really good in the mornings on my reset day, but towards the afternoon, it kind of falls off. I do have my ice latte that I've been drinking during the live stream. I'm still kind of tired. So, and I do actually, I want to sit down and look and see if there are more books in May that I want to read, which would be nice if there are, because I feel like May is kind of empty at the moment. So that's where we're at. I just finished doing all of my unboxing for all of the things that I've purchased lately. And that really just leaves goals left for me to work on today. And I'm not going to do that today. I think I'm just going to let it go. I do need to make some notes. I did go over my quarterly action plans and actually felt pretty good about where I'm at for April, but I do wanna make some more notes before I actually sit down and write out my goals. So that's what I'm going to work on for the rest of the afternoon is just to write out some ideas and kind of figure out how much time I have because May is a super busy month for us. It's always busy. We have a ton of birthdays, a ton of activities going on. So um, that's what I'm going to do for the rest of the afternoon. But I'm going to wrap up the video here. I hope that you enjoyed kind of a peek into my monthly reset day. If you have questions about anything that I've talked about or um, how I implement it, again, I have a video on how to implement a monthly reset day into your monthly schedule, um, which I will leave in the description box for you. But overall, it's been a good day. I haven't done nearly as much thinking stuff as I normally do, and I think that's mainly because I didn't have a big list coming into today, partly because the kids were sick and partly um, I it's kind of like between seasons almost for me. I don't have a lot of homeschool research to do right now, and I don't have a lot of any other type of research to do right now. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that it was informative to you. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one. Thanks guys. Bye.